I'm um, Rudi Streckler. I'm born and raised in Switzerland. I'm a biologist, and I'm interested in little animals in the oceans, actually in the ponds, in the lakes, and in the oceans. The animals are very small. They're not the big ones. They're the small ones, just as big as a grain of, of rice. And basically, one can be very happy that they are that small. You wouldn't go swimming if they were about that big. <laughs> this picture is from an animal. Um, that's, that's, that's my animal. And I will tell you more about it. And uh, wherever it's uh, red, that was in the picture before. So they're very complicated animals. There are lots of them. There are what, millions of billions of billions of these animals. There is for every star up there, there is one copy pot down here. And they are beautiful animals. Oi, that was one too far. They are beautiful animals. Uh, some of them uh, very fancy, other ones a little bit less. And you would, would wonder, what's the use of these animals? They are food. They are food for the fishes. The, the sardines here, they pick them out one after the other one. The bigger fishes, they pick out the sardines, and the very big ones, they pick out the ones who eat the sardines. So the whole thing is a chain. Without my animals, there wouldn't be a shark. There wouldn't be a fish. And so when we mess up with, our, with my animals, then we have a problem. The, the price of fish would be very expensive. So my animals are crustaceans. They are basically little lobsters. And they are old. They are around since 500 million years. They have a generation time of six months. So every year there are two generations. They have a few stages, four nuclear stages, five copepodite stages, and then they end up as males and females. And so they have to meet. They have to get together. Jurin in the 1820 made these, uh, these graphs here where they are actually together. My question is not how they, how they do it there. My question is, how do they find each other? The oceans are huge. And the animals, despite of the big numbers, they are quite afar of each other. So it's in the room of this, maybe 10 males, maybe 20 females, and they swim around about that fast. How do they meet? How do they find each other? And you have to think of it. It's dark. It's three-dimensional. The space is huge. So, so how do they find each other? They cannot sit down somewhere. There is nothing there. When we look at them, they have to swim. They have to swim constantly. And they don't swim, as you see, they don't swim so fast. What do they eat? They eat algae. They eat whatever little particles they can get. Maybe even pick up some, some chemicals directly. So, so that, that's their life. We go back to this problem about meeting each other. There are two ways to meet each other. One way is you run around fast and hope you bump into the right guy. Some people do that on the airport. <laughs> or you extend the perception range so you can see further around, that you can perceive what's out there. And, and then it goes much better. So, so there are these two things, speed and the range. Years ago, we made a model. So the red one, that's the range. The blue one, that's the speed. We put that whole thing together to get a graph. The graph shows where it's written bingo. That means you actually do meet somebody. You can see it to the right. You can see the speed. You can see the range gets better from R equal 0.1 to R 0.5. So if you make the range bigger, you don't need to have to speed so much anymore. If the range is bad, boy, you have to go all the way over, for you over there, you have to go all the way over there with high speed to, to, have, to have a bingo. That means you need a sensory system. That's much, much better than running around so fast. You need a sensory system, well, to find a mate. But with a sensory system, you also recognize and avoid predators. You also find food. And you also find the environment you actually like to be in it. So once you have that, you run into more problems. 
because how do you use your sensory system? Because it could be this way, that way, you have to discriminate and so on. Nicholas Steinbergen, he got the Nobel Prize many years ago, I think uh, 1973, um, for, for biology and, and, uh, and behavior. He said, long time ago, you have, in order to have successful mating, you have to suppress fleeing away from the situation, from the other one. You have to suppress attacking the other one. You have to synchronize in order to be with the other one. And you also have to advertise in order to say, I'm here, so that the other one actually can see it. Just think of fireflies, you know, they, they flash nicely. So, let's go first. Fleeing. Do they flee? Do these animals, my animals, flee? Oh yeah, sure. They have <coughs> mechanoreceptors, they have chemoreceptors. You can see there, uh, the receptors really very prominent. If you have mechanoreceptors, they are good for touch. Um, so you can sense water motion, you can sense currents, you can sense vibrations. Chemoreceptors, they are for taste, for smell, so you can sense chemicals. So with these two things, they don't have eyes. I mean, they have an eye, but the eye is just like a, a light sensor. Um, because it's dark anyway down there. So why, why have eyes? I make an experiment here. So I make some water motion with my pipette. That's the thing on the left, on the top there in the picture. I have an animal just more or less underneath it. I release a little bit of water to, to, to bother that little animal. And sure enough, it gets bothered. It runs away as fast as it can and goes faster and goes nicely away from that danger from the, I, I put in the water. How fast? 500 body lengths a second. If your car will go at 500 body lengths a second, you will go about Mach 2, Mach 3, you know? You will, you, wait, police will not catch you at all. <laughs> Unless they have a car like that too. So there they run away. And look at the short time. The whole thing was, was, was even not a tenth of a second. Question. If the other one is a conspecific instead of my pipette, do you still run away? Because the other one also pushes the water around, and so you actually should react immediately to run around. Let's look at it. So here are two conspecifics. They go bump into each other. It's dangerous. What do they do? Oh, they just dance around each other. That means they recognize that the other one is a conspecific. That also means if the other one were probably a male or a mate or so on, they could actually get the message. I go suppressing attacking. When we did these movies some, some years ago, uh, it happened that we had one predator in the, in the vessel. And so why not release my, 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 my drop of water uh, into, the, into the vessel there? Why not do that and have a look how this guy reacts? This guy actually sings of when there is a disturbance in the water, attack it, go and get it. And here, just in this one moment, you realize there is a guy there at this and this position, geometry like this, let's go and get him. High speed and catch him. But there was nobody there. Oh, that's bad news. Run away as fast as you can. And think about it, what went wrong? So here you have the whole sequence. You can see it really nicely. Think of it. We can see things happening in the water. This is, this is footprints. This is just like, like pretty soon we know uh, that there are rabbits in the backyard because we can see the footprints. That's the same way. Synchronization. So synchronization is like dancing with each other. The blue one, the blue dot there, that's the male. The red dot, that's the female. At 10 seconds, that's on the left side, at 10 seconds, the blue one realizes there's a red one in front of it. I have to watch it. I'm not really sure that the one red there is actually my species. Why not I just follow and have a look if it's actually true or not? 
And so at 20 seconds, that's when it goes down there, at 20 seconds, it's still behind it. At 30 seconds, it's still behind it, but now after 30 seconds, it's convinced, that's it, let's go for it. For the next two seconds, they mate, then the female goes left, and that one goes to the right. So I'm very short. When the female jumps, he jumps. When the female stops, he stops. And it's totally organized. What the female does, it doesn't go like music one after the other. No, it's, it's, it's a kind of random, which means for him, he has to get really, watch the little one, watch the, the, the red one. Do I have to jump? Do I not have to jump? I have to jump, okay, because he jumps and so on. If he makes a mistake, it falls apart. Most likely, when it's the wrong species, you will make mistakes. When it's the right species, you don't make mistakes, so the right species will afterwards, after 30 seconds, uh, meet. We go to advertising. I was a little bit fast. So, we go to advertising. The one on the left wants to meet somebody, makes a beautiful pattern into the water. The two guys in the mid, they're not interested. They don't make any disturbance. They don't make any signal. The one on the right makes different signals. And when you go further on another uh, species, you can see on the bottom to the right there, you can see a real, real beautiful eddy. And then the next eddy and the next one. This one not only makes a disturbance, it makes a beautiful disturbance so that when the male comes in it, with the mechanoreceptors, with the chemoreceptors, realizes that's one of mine. I have to follow that pattern. When you look at another animal, totally different pattern. So this is again the footprint in the snow. <clears throat> so when I look at these ones, at the suppressing of fleeing, the suppressing of attacking, the synchronizing, the advertising, when I look at the, all that, I want to see everything together. So I go and put everything in the vessel. This vessel is a special one. You see the guys actually like uh, synchronized swimming, some of them, like on the left side in the mid. This is a front view and the side view of the same animal. It's not two animals. But that means I actually know the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and the Z coordinate in a three-dimensional space. We can put that in the computer. This is the blue one, um, is, is the female. She goes up, the male catches up, and the female goes faster. The color says, how, uh, how fast they swim. So even if the female makes six around and all that stuff, he will follow the six, exactly. There is one question here. How did he know that he goes this way and not that way? Well, look at this one. He got it the wrong way. So that's the female there. The male is the, the lighter blue. Goes the wrong direction. Oh no, that's the wrong direction. You have to go this way. How did he know? What's in it? There was a message in that track. The female puts a message in it. This is my way. This is my way. I'm going this way. I'm going this way. This is, don't go over there. Okay, so now we want to go and test that. We are biologists. We want to test it. We are scientists. We want to test the whole thing. How to be tested? We make our own tracks. So we have tracks with water in it. We have tracks with smell of females in it. And we have tracks with smell of males in it. And then we put down there in the vessel, we put some males in it and have a look. What do they do when they bump in one of these tracks? When they bump into the track of water, they just go through it. When they go into the track of males, they just don't go, to go through it. And here, when they go into the track of the female, they follow the track. Now, we didn't figure out what the guy was actually thinking when he hits the pipette and not the female. So, um, anyway, must have been bad news. So, what you can see here is it's not only that he follows the tracks, he destroys the track for the next guy. He wants to be sure I'm the one, okay? 
What about the one who, who went the wrong way? Oh, here one went the wrong way as well. Have a look again. So he goes the wrong way, turns around, and follows up, hits the pipette, swims to the side. So these are my animals. And what do we, what do we take home? We take home that these guys actually have a life of their own in a small space. The ocean is up in liters of water, not in a big ocean. For them, it's here. For the whales, it's different. For these animals, it's here. And, and, and if we now go, by any means, for this guy here, that one goes after the, after the chemo reception, that one goes by smell. If, if we have the stupidity to put some chemicals into the water to, uh, to make it much, much harder for him to find a female. Well, then we pay with the price of fish. Thank you.